10 years ago, I made a decision that really liberated my creativity and gave me a lot more peace of mind. That decision was to uncopyright all of my content. So what that means is that if you see any ideas from me in writing or in video, on podcasts, wherever, you are welcome to take so-called my ideas and use them wherever you want. You don't even have to mention my name. You can call it your own. And that is uh, that uncopywriting liberated my creativity because, well, I realized, oh, I want to be um, I the things I never want to have created something. And then someone else told me, oh, I created that first. Um, you should give me credit for that idea because look over here, I created it. And that always bothered me whenever I saw that happening. Um, it, it was rare that that it happened to me, but I've seen it happen to other people. And I'm like, why do we have to be, in my opinion, that petty? Like, it's not like we are trying to keep physical items from being stolen. I mean, for example, my phone, I'm not going to allow you to come and take my phone. That would be true theft. Um, if, unless I was giving it to you, but if you just come and took it from me without my permission, that would be theft. Physical items are, are truly limited. I mean, they are <laughs> the laws, the law of physical law of conservation, you, you know, you, but ideas are not limited. Ideas are not physical items. Okay. Ideas can have, can have a life of changing innovating, renewing forever. An idea that was an ancient idea can be repurposed for today in a totally different context and be and seem to be different, even though it has those old roots. And so that's why I don't think, in my opinion, we should protect and copyright ideas. I think it's bad for human innovation and we all need to innovate and create faster, in my opinion, to solve the world's problems, to uh, bring humanity to a, a, a higher level of wisdom, enlightenment, um, you know, collaboration. And so whenever I think about my ideas, I always put it in quotes because I don't, I think, I don't really believe that any of anything I say is truly original. Um, it, even the language I use, English, was taught to me by other people. I couldn't even express myself in this language without multiple people having spent lots of care and time teaching me to speak. And so even the language itself, right, came from other people. And the the ideas used from my language have, I'm sure, been mixtures of so much of what I've read and heard in my life. And so I, I just think it's, um to me, it feels very egoic to say, this is my idea. And therefore, since it's my idea, you should credit me for this idea. Um comes, of course, ultimately from fear. And I, I believe that fear, when, when you allow yourself to be in that state, will create more fear. So before I made this decision 10 years ago, I was already creating some content and creating courses. And I was always so afraid that someone would take some idea in my one of my courses or some idea and maybe something I wrote and 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 you know use it and not give me credit, right? And that's that's how I, I think probably most creators have that fear because they don't know any better. They haven't heard a video like this where someone is so bold to say everything is uncopyrighted, use anything you hear from me, whether my free content or my paid content, my courses. You can teach literally, I'm giving you the permission to take my courses and teach it all 
to your students and never mention my name at all. I don't need you. I don't want you to always be concerned. Oh, did I did I mention George enough? Did I mention this other person? Other people are not taking this kind of bold and maybe crazy move. So you might have to mention other people to make it feel ethical to you. And But when it comes to me and my ideas, no. Have at it. Take everything. Call it your own. Uh, change it however you want to. Um, you know, of course, if you change it, don't, don't mention to me because maybe I didn't, <laughs> I didn't approve that change or if that wasn't what I said, right? You know, things like that. And, and if you do, so here's the thing. If you do take my ideas and use it as your own and you improve upon it, I hope that you're going to be, you're going to give this kind of license that I, that I give. I've, it seems only fair, right? If you take someone's ideas or my ideas in this case and, and not credit me, which I don't care, that's great. I, don't, I get enough emails, right? I don't need people saying, hey, can I use this idea? Please have at it. That's part of also why I'm, I, I do this is I don't want more messages of people asking me, can I use this idea? No, go, go for it. Please be liberated to use any of my ideas. But if you do that and you improve on it, I hope that if I happen to chance upon that idea, that you'll that that you have that I have your blanket permission to use it as well as my own. I don't have to always go. Well, this came from so and so. This came from so and so. It just gets tiring after a while to just always be afraid, like on on vigilant to say, well, where did this come from? Where did this come from? Now, since we don't yet live in that kind of generous world, an open world, I do try to credit ideas wherever. I, I remember hearing it from. Um, I'm sure I don't always, I don't do a good job of it because I'm sure, like I said, lots of ideas. I'm sure I read it from here and here and I just forgot where it came from and it just kind of melded all in my brain in this <laughs> amalgam of whatever, whatever I ended up saying. But I do remember where this uncopyright idea came from, which was uh, Leo Babauta from Zen Habits. Um, as of this recording, he just recently reinstated his uh, maybe not recently, maybe in the last year or two or something, reinstated his YouTube channel. So be sure to check out Zen Habits on YouTube and Leo Babauta, B-A-B-A-U-T-A. -A -A. Um, so so I he had already uncopyrighted all of his ideas since 2008. All his He had a very popular blog. I don't know if it's still popular anymore, but it had over a million readers, something like that, Zen Habits. And all everything was uncopyrighted. And he says, don't worry, use my ideas, whatever you want to do, it's just fine. And I found that so uh, calming to my nervous system and like inspirational to my creativity as I said, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. So in 2014, I started doing this. And well, how has it been going since then? Now it's been 10 years, 10 year anniversary of my uncopyright. And I have had zero problems with doing it. And only I've had benefits. Like I said, I already had the benefits when I liberated myself to do it because I'm like, oh, I better quickly create ideas as much as possible so that, so that, so I'm like, I better create as many ideas, publish as many ideas as I can, as quickly as I can, because I don't want someone else to have created the idea and then blame me later for saying, you didn't, you didn't credit me. So I just want to be the first one, if, if at all possible, to create as many ideas as I can. Um, so that I can liberate them and say, hey, everyone, have at it. You know, don't feel like you have to credit me or or or, or anyone else. If I if you heard of, if I was the first one literally in the world to say something, uh, which I don't believe that's ever true, but in our modern context, maybe I was the first one to have tweeted it out or put it on YouTube or something. It's like great, everyone, free, feel free, use it uh, to improve yourself and to help others improve themselves. So. This kind of liberation is, you know, imagine, right? Like imagine, I just imagine if everyone had this kind of open heartedness, what would, what would, what would that mean? That would mean we all remove more fear from the world. There's less fear in the world. Everyone feels more open to just collaborate with each other's ideas, wherever you got it, you know, et cetera. Now, I know that a lot of you who are watching this or listening to this are small creators, beginner creators. And I know that you say, well, George, that's all good. That's all good for you. 
you you already have a big audience or I don't have a big audience, but I have a probably a bigger audience than most people watching this anyway. George, you have a bigger audience than me. You can do that and you have a successful business. You can do this kind of, you know, open hearted, you know, hippie type of move, but I can't. I have to copyright my books. I have to copyright my ideas because uh, that's how people can credit me and I can build my audience, grow my audience that way. I understand that concern. And I want to give you a, a little pep talk. Maybe it might change your mind on this. Now, again, I'm not saying that everyone should do this and everyone, if you're, if you don't do this uncopyright thing, you're wrong and you're, you know, uh, you're, you're less, you know, liberated than me or whatever. No, but obviously it has worked so well for me for 10 years and I recommend everyone consider it. So let me tell you this. When I, 2014, back in 2014, I was just starting as a content creator. I have to be really clear about that. I had a, I had a, I didn't have an audience back in 2014. Now I had a, a, a an email list of a, maybe about a thousand people. So I have to admit that I had already built an email list of about a thousand people. And I had maybe like 3,000 Facebook friends or something. This was before I started using my Facebook business page. I just posting most of my stuff in my Facebook profile, private, you know, to my friends and family, that kind of stuff. So I had a bunch of Facebook friends. I had an email list, but elsewhere I didn't. My YouTube channel was uh, very, very small, uh, almost non-existent. My, my um, uh, where else do I create? LinkedIn was pretty small. I didn't have a company page yet. So I had, I, had, I had created it afterwards. Most of my LinkedIn stuff is on my company page now. And over the last 10 years, I've built it to about a thousand followers on my LinkedIn page, company page. Um, anyway, it, I was a beginner creator. And as a beginner creator, I already started feeling this inner dynamic of fear, fear of theft, fear of privacy, or, uh, fear, fear of piracy. <laughs> I was never really fearing privacy, but fear of piracy and theft of my ideas. And I already kind of felt every time I created, I better lock it down. I better protect it. I already had the experience of trying to protect my courses and making sure that nobody stole it and everything like that. Um, obviously, I still sell a lot of courses and they're still behind a paywall and you have to pay to access my courses. But once you access my courses, you can do whatever you want with it. Take the ideas, take the curriculum teach it as your own. Who knows? You, you may have a business right there, just taking George's courses and reteaching them exactly as it is, as your own, or improving upon it. Have at it. Like I said, have at it as long as you allow me to have at your improvements of, on my ideas too. I hope we can all be liberated like this and keep making humanity better. But I started out when I made this uncopyright claim you know, and, and public announcement, I did it because I was a beginner creator feeling that concern about theft of pri or piracy and go, I felt like I was kept running up against a wall of anxiety and, and concern that, oh my gosh, how am I going to, I, should I post this on social media because other people might take it? And I was vigilant whenever I was surfing social media to say, oh, um, did this person, did this person use my, use that idea first or did I use that idea first? Should I tell them that it was my idea? That, and I see people doing that, and I just find that so restricting, constricting of creativity, right? Because that is. And every ounce of energy towards, constri towards constriction, towards fear of someone taking ideas is taken away from, from creativity. And so I said, no, I, I, I'm, I have to free myself and therefore free my audience so that there is an, a generous relationship here. And so that's what I did. I, I claimed it in 2014, uncopyright. And ever since then, I have felt so good about just putting my ideas out there and just like having this peace of mind every day and this open heart to say, please, please, let's all improve these ideas together. What do you think about this? And and help help me become better, and I hope I can help you create more and better ideas. So, um, so ten years later, like I said, it's going really well, and I 
try and I have to, this is a reminder to myself. I try to put my ideas out there as quickly as I can, whenever I have an idea, instead of just putting it in my phone and like, okay, here's some content ideas for next time I write next time I, I try to publicly post it. And I have, you know, this is a good video for me to be making because I'm reminding myself now I was doing this publicly on Twitter for a couple of years. And somehow I have kind of fallen off of that wagon, the, the, the Twitter. So the reason why I put my ideas, my raw ideas on Twitter as quickly as I can is because Twitter is a timestamp. Meaning when I tweet something out, twitterx.com, you know, now it's called, when I tweet something out, okay, I have, I think an hour to edit it. But then after that hour goes, it is uneditable and you know, people screenshot tweets, right? Screenshot posts on Twitter or X. And that's like, well, someone said this, right? Well, that's why Twitter or X is an excellent timestamp for public ideas. And I recommend you use something like, so I think there are, um, uh, I, I forget if threads can be edited or not. So maybe threads is a good alternative to Twitter, but Twitter certainly is a very common public um, announcement of an idea. And then YouTube is also an, another good one. So if you if you like giving your new ideas on YouTube, that's fine too. Because as you know, once you upload a video to YouTube, you can't edit that same video again. It's been, there's a timestamp of when this thing was said on, on internet video. Twitter is easier for me because I could just quickly, you know, using phone or whatever, like hype out a few ideas and 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 Twitter also is so um, Twitter has such a high standard and an incredibly high standard of whether some, something will spread. It has to be really aligned with the current culture in terms of ideas and language and uh, vibe before it will spread. And so that's why most of my tweets don't spread and and I don't mind because I'm not trying to align myself with the current culture. I'm just experimenting. And so I really use Twitter as that kind of public experimentation that has the benefit of a timestamp so that, so that I'm not trying to claim credit here. What I'm trying to do is so that in the future, if someone else, if I keep talking about something and someone else says, hey, you're taking my idea, then I can point back to a tweet from five years ago, say, no, no, I actually started talking about this idea three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, or whatever it may be. So I'm really... I could say you could say I'm 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 in part protecting myself from having someone else claim that I I pirated them, and also I'm allowing my I'm kind of giving myself this urgency to quickly announce new ideas as, as much as I can so that I can liberate the ideas for everybody to use as well. So uh, again, whether you are taking something you've seen from me in writing or in video, you can clip any of my videos by the way and use them anywhere. Now I. I would feel like if you take my paid course videos and just upload it somewhere, that that feels like it's a different level of piracy. That feels like you're, that feels much more like you're stealing, right? You're literally taking my paid course videos and just selling them as elsewhere. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm, I don't have the energy to police and to like look for that stuff. I actually have, someone has told me that has been done. Uh, I I know my my course videos are out there. People are selling it um, under their own name. It's me. It's me talking. It's kind of funny. And I also know that my books have been pirated. I, 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 I randomly, this is, wasn't even someone who, who actually someone have, a couple of people have, have emailed me. But I also, on my own accord, just randomly was searching Amazon and I found my book. I was searching something. And then of course, someone else, so a, a book name came up that sounded a lot like mine. I looked into the book. I even bought the book and it's exactly my book, <laughs> exactly my book. And the funny thing is they didn't even bother to remove the links and mentions of my name. And so I'm like, all right, well, someone else is making money off of my exact writings. Um, and they didn't even bother to edit things out. So I guess people are discovering me. Okay, great. <laughs> but if someone is selling my courses, which is my main livelihood, they're selling my courses, my videos, and um, you know, not crediting me. Well, I guess people will find out it's me because it's me talking. They're curious who that person is. Um, 
but yeah, anyway, you can still take my paid courses, take the ideas from my paid courses, sell it as your own. But I hope if you improve upon it, you'll let me know. So it like, you know, it'll sharpen me to make even better courses in the future. So I hope this is interesting at the very least. I hope this uh, is liberating for you. Again, I'm not saying you're a bad person if you don't do this, but I am saying that this has done me a world of good and has built me a very nice business. 10 years, proof. So I hope this helps. And um, I wish you, I wish you, I wish you the liberation and the uh, prolificness, <laughs> the abundance of creativity that you find yourself having so many ideas, you don't even have time to create for the rest of your life, all of these ideas that will keep coming to you. I, I wish you joy in the creation and I wish you peace of mind, ultimately. Genuine, deep peace of mind every day. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing if you have any thoughts on this below. Thanks.